This is the Rumor Report with Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, Buju is quarantining in Kingston, Jamaica at home, and he has a new project, Upside Down. And here's what he had to say about the new album and also the title. Why do I choose a title, Upside Down? Well, if I listen to a song with out of brethren of mine, they will say to me, the song is bad. I think the song is good. Most of the things that we talk about, we ascribe a negative connotation to it. Bad becomes good, right becomes wrong, innocence becomes guilt, guilt becomes innocent, true becomes false, real becomes fake, up becomes down, and we accept it all. I like that explanation. Yeah, that's my wife's favorite artist, so she's super excited to hear some new Buju uh, music. Right, and uh, he also, you know he's on the Division album, by the way, in case you haven't listened to that yet. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, in addition to that, he talks about why he believes that reggae and dance hall isn't mainstream the way it should be. What do they say? They say reggae music, Bugo Yaga music. They say these Rasta man, all they do is smoke marijuana, yes. And that's what you guys need to be smoking too. Because all them drugs that they're giving you up here is turning you dumb and dumb. You understand? Yeah. And who benefit from all the drugs you're taking up there? The pharmaceutical companies. Now, who benefit from marijuana? The same pharmaceutical companies. We don't want to tell the people any lie. We have to tell the people the truth. And that is reggae music. That's why we don't get the mainstream appeal and the mainstream behind us because our music is a music aimed at uplifting something inside of you, yeah. not outside of you. And that's so true. There always be like one or two songs that break through commercial on the radio here that be like five years old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I always felt like, you know, listen, all I listen to when I work out, when I go running is dance hall and reggae. So I feel them. All right, now Tracy Ellis Ross is talking about how she is happily single. She said, I want to be in a relationship, but I'm not going to spend time moping around. Uh, She did this interview, actually, I'm trying to think, when did she do this interview? She did it a a little earlier this year. It was Mm -hmm. before lockdown, before coronavirus pandemic uh, created this lockdown situation. Now, she said she has embraced being 45, unmarried, with no kids, and said that she wished she spent more time growing up, dreaming of her life, not a wedding. She said, it's one of the reasons I feel so strongly about telling the stories that I tell. I wish I had known there were other choices, not just about how I could be living, but how I could feel about the way my life was. I was raised by society to dream of my wedding, but I wish I had been dreaming of my life. There are so many ways to curate happiness, find love, and create a family, and we don't talk about them. It creates so much shame and judgment. She also had said that uh, people misinterpret being happily single as not wanting to be in a relationship. Of course, I want to be in a relationship, but what am I going to do? Spend all the time that I'm not in one moping around? No, I'm going to live my life to the fullest, and I'm going to be happy right here where I am. Why, Why can't you dream about your wife? I mean, your wedding and your life, though. Isn't the wedding just a part of your life? When you dream about your life, don't you think about all of the different things that you would want to do in your life? Well, what she's saying is that they kind of program you as a child to just buy and society to dream of her wedding. But she's saying that's not the only thing that you have to look forward to. And it is true. People make you feel like, OK, you're going to reach this age and you're going to get married then you're going to buy a house. And sometimes life doesn't happen that way. And you can still have a fulfilling life and not do things in that order. So, yeah, that's a part of it. The wedding, the wedding would be a part of it. You know what I mean? Not, not. You can think about you. You can, you can simultaneously think about all of that. You can think about a bunch of different things. Some things happen. Some now, things don't. So what? Now Zoe Kravitz says that now that she's married, she's offended that people assume she'll have a baby with her husband. She said a lot of people ask the question, "When are you going to have a baby?" or say things like, "When's the baby?" And I really get offended by people assuming that's something that I have to do because society says so. She said, "Right now, I'm <laughs> certainly not in a place where I think I'm able to do that just because of work, right. and also just I don't know. I like my free time." She said, "You know, she does love her husband." She says, "I feel like I've known him my entire life. He's one of the kindest people I've ever met. He's one of the the most honest people I've ever met. And I feel like I've known him since I was a kid, even though I haven't. Mm. Yeah, everybody, everybody way too woke for me. Wow, like, I, she's offended? I, yes. Like, that's common sense. Like, you get married. That's what people say. Okay. Remember that song you used to do? First comes marriage, then comes the baby carriage. Like, that's that life. Oh, that song? <laughs> that's not society. That's not, that's but, that's life. Not, but that's not everybody's life. And so yeah, but saying, when you get married... When you get married, that's a common sense thing for people to think, oh, when y'all going to have kids? Like, that's nothing to be offended by. I mean, you can't tell people what to be offended by, but... I you can't. She like, feels like, that like, way. She like, feels like, that like, way. Like, I mean, you get married and then what's next? You know, you usually have kids. I mean, just people... Like, know, I, I, 
I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it's the person's intention to offend you when they ask you that is what I would, would say. I, yeah, I don't think so either. All right, now Kelly Rowland is talking about being managed by Rock Nation and how it just happened. She said it's family. She said uh, of her new song, also Coffee, she wanted it to be an expression of black beauty and the different variations and tones and body shapes. I was really just inspired by black women. Uh, she also said that she's excited about her new album. She said, I'm excited for the fact that the years it took me to find tempo, the whole album's not up tempo, but I'm excited to share my tempo. I feel like I always had mids and slower records, but I'm ready to dance. And the thing is, she said it before the quarantine, we were at the close of the record. That's when you're like turning the records in, uh, talking to writers and producers. But she said it's not that it slowed down, but definitely made things a little more challenging to navigate. We got this, but definitely her album is going to come out this year. So, you okay. know, congrats to her. Congrats to her signing to Rock Nation. And, you know, she's been doing her Instagram live after dark segments. Also, if you want to hear some more about uh, Kelly Roman. All Talk right. I'm Angela Lee. Kelly Rowland. I love Kelly Rowland. That's the Godiva chocolate goddess right there. Good people. Good energy, always. All right, I'm Angela Yee, and that is your Rumor Report.